think we are live. Hello, hello, hello. What is going on? You are watching and of course listening to Tags Live, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition where we are here every Wednesday night. I am your host, Steve V. This is episode 533 alongside Cody Maurice Daggett, co-host. How are you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm doing wonderful. I am having a great night here. I'm happy to have you back, back in New York City. I am. It is freezing here. We're not going to even lie. <laughs> <Not quite here. laughs> I've been doing this show a couple of weeks in the new year in sunny, beautiful Puerto Vallarta, where it's actually mm, the, the best time of year to be in Puerto Vallarta this time of season because it's not hot, it's not muggy, it's like perfect. And so to make that transition after two and a half weeks of being there to here was a little bit of a chill factor, but you know, it is New York City and I love home. We were talking about it offline and it's always great to be back home, yeah. just to be in your home, right? Oh yeah, there's nothing better than being comfortable in your house. Eat you're just staying in the I mean I haven't just going to be staying in the house though because once you go outside that cold hits and your penis inverts into a vagina <laughs> well, but we make it work here in New York we you know what tough. you gotta go out in style you gotta be fashionable I'm go to the jockstrap and party warm. later on tonight and oh are you I, I might if you're welcome to come and join me oh, anyways maybe. we got a show to do Probably. child let's get, let's get <laughs> we'll talk about that later okay okay <laughs> So much to talk about on this episode, including the Emmys. You know, it's a word season, and a lot of people don't realize that it's going to seem like there's going to be award season after award season. You're going to be like probably sick of it. I mm -hmm. am one of those people that used to be so into the awards, and now I'm like, I went through like, I don't want to see that, Valerie Cherish. Mm -hmm. And now I'm sort of like in between. I wish I would have watched the Emmys that occurred on Monday night because they really seem like the one to watch. Everything seemed to go off spectacularly, including many of our LGBTQ artists. Many of them won, including RuPaul, who won his fifth Emmy for RuPaul's Drag Race. And he brought up all the queens to the stage. Yes, he did. How fabulous was that? It was Are amazing. You are yeah. you watching the current season? I'm behind because I just got back in town, but I'm going to binge watch. How is it going so far? Season what? Season 16? I'm pretty sure. Oh, my oh, gosh. You better get that a, down. I am a bad gay. I should did this right before we got on. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. But the current so, season's on MTV. It is. And it's amazing. They did a split premiere this this uh, the past two episodes and I've liked all the queens so far. There's a mean girl in there. So that's going to be good TV, but I don't think I like her that much, but it's, it's a very good to start off to be a very good season. I hear it's going to be very sh shady. So yeah, I'm looking forward to be. it. We need our, you got to come girls. over and watch or I can go, go oh, over there. We can watch let's together. Do it. Let's do a Friday let's night. I mean, I mean, RuPaul's Drag Race, absolutely. Elton John is now an EGOT winner. And you know, there's not oh, yeah. that many of them. I think there's about 10 to a dozen of them. Whoopi Goldberg's one of them. To be an EGOT is to, means you are an Emmy winner, a Grammy winner, an Oscar winner, and a Tony Award winner. So as you can imagine, not that many people could get that. So kudos to Elton John. Nisi Nash, who is mm, mm. what I don't know if she ever came out as lesbian, but she is dating a or married to a woman, correct? Yep. Oh, yes. And she won for her role in Dahmer, which I have to say, I know it was a lot of controversy when that came out. We were talking about it a lot earlier in 2023. I personally loved it and thought her role in particular was compelling and she mm -hmm. deserved it. Nisi Nash is really getting her flowers in the last six months to a year now, and she deserves it. She's a hard worker, she's an amazing actress, and she's an incredible celebrity. And I mean that in the best way possible. Oh yeah, definitely. She was actually the highlight of the evening for me. Her acceptance speech 
was so beautiful. She thanked herself in the most thought provoking way because it wasn't about her saying that she's so amazing and she is. So, but she was thanking herself for not giving up on herself. And it was just so inspiring to me. And I just, I just love her. She thanked her wife and she thanked all the black women in society that have been overlooked and including the character that she played in, in Dahmer, which won her her Emmy. And I, I just love her. She sh I want to see her in, in everything now. She's great. You know what? Me too. And you have to thank yourself. It seems so overlooked, but it's one of the things and intentions that I think we should all be setting in 2024 to, you know, you got to be grounded first and foremost with yourself before you can start giving and receiving to others. And that is just a powerful message. It's one of my messages for 2024 to have more confidence in myself yes. from the little things of entering a room to sexuality, to everything in between, that I belong here, I have space for myself. And it's taken 50 plus years to get there. So Nisi Nash, thank you so much. Yes. Jennifer Coolidge also showed up winning for White Lotus, as she should have. Yes. And she made a reference thanking the evil gays. <laughs> That's a reference to White Lotus season two, yes. <laughs> because they were evil. You're welcome, Jen. I am an evil gay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so fabulous we just love coolidge jennifer and not the coolidge effect we like jennifer coolidge we were you'll know what we're talking about if we're referencing episode 532 keep up with us people Come and, on. Then, and then we have to talk about somebody that we've been talking about all in 2023 and i love that he's continuing his throne in 2024 pedro pascal who walked the red carpet with his sister, Lux. Lux, as some of you may or may not know, is his sister who is trans, and they were matching beautifully, walking down the red carpet, looking stellar. And you can tell that the Chileans are serving it up. And mm -hmm. I just loved that he chose his sister and... He's been standing up for his sister for quite a long time for her, you know, as a transgender woman. And I think, wow, he, we should mention, was up for lead actor in a drama series for playing Joel in The Last of Us. And I didn't watch that yet, but I would love to. Oh, it's so good. And he's also been quoted as saying he's very protective of Lux, who is 17 years younger than him. She and she is and has always been one of the most powerful people and personalities I've ever known. My protective side is lethal, but I need her more than she needs me, he said. Aww. And, oh, you know, he's so amazing. He's so amazing. <laughs> and coming from, you know, I'm so close. I know you know my sister, and we are such advocates for each other. And she has been such a strong ally in my world for so many years. We've worked together and and to see this with Pedro is beautiful. And I love that. Yes. And I love Lux. She's gorgeous. And I, I think this is the first time I've ever seen her out in, in the wild. And I think that he is such a staunch supporter of our community. And I'm just so happy that he's doing the, these amazing things and really showing his expressing his gratitude at, for his family, for his sister, because it means so much to the world it, to show everybody that as long as you love these people, then it doesn't matter whatever, anything, whatever category they fall into. Absolutely. And lastly, we wanted to shout out to Joel Kim Booster and his bo boyfriend, John Michael Kelly. John Michael Kelly is uh, works in the gaming industry and Joel, as many of you know, is the writer of Fire Island, and he was nominated for the film Fire Island. I think for the film, yes, he was nominated yes. for uh, Outstanding mm -hmm. Television Movie. Um, it didn't win. It, uh, weird, weird. The Al Yankovic story won ahead of him. I think actually Fire Island should have won, but to Me be honest, too. I didn't watch. <laughs> the other one so i don't know but it must have been a strong <laughs> it must have been a strong category because fire island was so good and it's nice to see you know the article said that these two joel kim booster and his boyfriend 
have been together for years. You thought off camera you were telling me that they've been together only a couple of years. Do we now know? Yeah, I thought it was long? like one or two. No, they're very private about their relationship. So I did I did as much diving as I could and I couldn't find anything. Everything just says a couple of years at, because they're so protective of the relationship. So it was really good to see them on the carpet together being so lovey-dovey too, because again, it normalizes all these things. And I think, it, I still think it's just two years, which like you were saying off camera, that, that is, that's actually a really long time in the gay world. <laughs> it really is. And so whether it's two years or longer or whatever, they look amazing. I love that they were showing affection for each other and kudos to both of them so love yeah. that it's normalizing all of this we are live actually in front of a live oh, yeah. virtual audience i see some familiar faces names and anything that anybody wanted to say before i move on to our next topic cody bryce says that uh exquisite act in Dahmer, uh, Bryce actually went to Milwaukee to pay uh, his to pay respects to the victims of. Uh, he went last year to pay respect to the victims of, of Jeffrey Dahmer. He also goes wow. on to say that uh, he he's asking us, "Did we like the Fire Island Island movie or reality TV show better?" <laughs> the movie, a hundred percent. Oh. For sure. <laughs> I liked no the shade, but totally different. We're going to be talking about Fire Island once again, coming up in a hot topic here. So we're going to continue that Fire Island mystique. But for, the movie was just well produced. Well, I just loved mm -hmm. it. And the reality show I thought was fun, um, but it was fluffy. But I thought the movie yes. was good. I hope they have a part good two. Word. Yeah. yeah. Like a good reality Ooh. mess. Okay. <laughs> we had to follow up with Little Nas X. We were talking about him on episode 532 with his brand new single and companion video, Jay Christ. And what we were saying about it is it has a lot of religious influence, a lot of religious imagery in there. He is playing Jesus in there. Well, he divides the internet after issuing an apology. He actually wrote, had this four minute video. And one of the things he said is, I messed up really bad this time. He essentially was saying that he's not necessarily apologizing for the music, the song that's out there, mm -hmm. because what he was really trying to say is, like Jesus, I'm back. It's, it was a reference and that was it. But what people are coming for him or what he thinks a lot of people were coming for him was all the pre Twitter and social media that he put out there to promote Jay Christ. And a lot of it had to do with him sitting down in front of what is known in Christianity or Catholicism is taking the with the wine and the the little wafers the communion mm -hmm. if you will and yep. he at one point is consuming mounds of those little wafers they weren't the real communion wafers and drinking these little shots of wine they weren't the real <laughs> blessed body of wine and he wanted everyone to know that he just thought it was being fun i've made fun of those things back in the day when i was in catholic school too and but he made this whole apology. It's like this four minute long apology that he thinks he went too far. He's heard people saying and a lot of people like Andy Cohen have come forth and said, you don't know anybody in an apology, including other celebrities as well. There's a lot to unpack with this. Some naysayers, if you will, because we talked about this in our meeting, have come forth and said, well, you've seen that since the single has dropped, it hasn't done so well in the UK. And often that's a good meter to how a song will do over here on Billboard when it comes to America. And now you're just, you know, the song's kind of a flop. So you're trying to backpedal and say, oh, it was all a mistake and I've learned and you're going to repackage. That could mm -hmm. be true. There could be a lot of all this true. I just think when you put artwork out there, if anything I could say to Little Nas X is just put it out there. Do your research ahead of time. Madonna back in the day, and I know I reference her a lot, 
didn't question and or at least we didn't hear she did and she put it out there janet jackson in rhythm nation ba days back in the day stood by her ground on what she was talking about on the knowledge and people need to know about this and that it she did they didn't come on any interview now we have social media to backpedal and say oh i apologize it's like if nothing else stand by your work as an artist don't come back later and put that it makes him seem weak now somebody that I actually was looking up to as a newer artist out there is feeling the pressure of social media and feeling this need to put this apology out there when people are doing disgusting things with mm -hmm. the wars that are overseas, with anti-Semitism that really should be apologizing. I just think, no, little Nas X, stand by your artwork. Where do you stand on this, Cody? Oh, first of all, I wanna say that video, I watched it finally and it looks so expensive. I cannot believe he's re releasing this independently i it just blows my mind that he would have as much money to make all of this on his own so that was my first thought after i watched the video but then i watched the apology video and i think personally that he doesn't owe anybody shit okay and i said that with my chest because this is his artistic vision and he's speaking his truth and how he feels through his artwork uh now, the biggest concern for an artist in, in this life, I feel like, is that they are misunderstood and their artwork is misunderstood. And I think that that's where this apology is coming from, really. He's trying to explain himself and <clears throat> apologize for his, art, his vision being misinterpreted and uh, possibly offending people. I agree that it does make him look a little bit weak because he should stand 10 toes in and say that this is my vision, this is my art, this is what uh, a piece of who I am. And if you don't get it, then that's fine, but don't come for my neck because other rappers have done this before. His namesake, Nas, he, he dressed up as Jesus Christ before. Nobody, there was no blowback there. When Kanye did it, there was a little bit of black backlash, but, and when Madonna did it, there was backlash too. But other people have done this before. He is this is not anything new. Jesus is a recognizable figure out there in the world. And for artistic purposes, I think it's perfectly fine to utilize his image. Yeah. I mean, if you just want to be an artist that puts out music that is PG, if you will, not offending mm -hmm. anybody, great. But if you're go, go do a yeah. Carpenters or uh, what is that with the Donnie and, and Marie? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do that. But I just think in this, it's he knows social media. His team knows social media. He knew what he was doing when he put this out there. You're going to get blowback no matter what you do in this current climate. I just think, my goodness, stand by your work. If you haven't learned yeah. anything from the David Bowies of the world, from EGOT, Elton John of the world, yes. from, we could go on and on, Madonna, uh, all of them, you need to stand by your work. You need to really focus and figure out if this is the messaging that you really want to put out there, but then you need to stand by it. And unless you've done something that has really crossed a line that is anti-Semitic, semitic that we've seen recently or i mean kid rock doing all kinds of crazy shit out there uh, with bud mention. light and <laughs> on and on i mean it's like stand by your work little yeah. nas x and come on i thought you had yeah, a bigger I... backbone than you did and i don't know it's a little bit like oh, you know <laughs> not sitting well with me so oh but yeah he need, yeah he definitely needs to come back and say i'm not you're sorry gonna go that, that far if you're going to be an artist that's going to go that far and you know the game right now that's escalated with social media then you need to also stand by your work i mean that's right yeah but anything we want to read from, yeah oh I was just going to say the art is so much better when you're pushing society forward and pushing the boundaries of things. So I see that all of this is is wonderful and he just needs to, to stand by it. So, yeah, uh, Bryce says that he loves <laughs> communion grape juice and he thinks that <laughs> Lil Nas X is only apologizing because something is happening behind closed doors that scares him. And he says, mm. what did uh, Reverend T.D. Jake say? And I have no idea. 
And he said he also goes to say on go on to say that people complain less when Gaga made Judas. Just saying. Okay, got and it. And then Doug says uh, he should stand by his work, and if someone doesn't like it, they don't have to watch it. There it is. Bloop, bloop. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> love it. Okay, well, this next topic is on to season two, and we're talking about for the love of Dilfs, Daddy. Uh, Daddies, I'd like to fuck season yeah. two, and we're it's on the out TV platform. You watch season one, Cody. It's mm -hmm. actually hosted by Stormy Daniels of all people. She's back for season two, and they just announced season two will be back, returning another season. It's iconic, and I didn't watch season one. First off, before we talk about the people that are the himbos versus the daddies. What did you think of season one? Well, first of all, I want to say, could, do I qualify as a DILF? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I know. I think I'm definitely in that category, I think, too. I'm definitely, we're not himbos, that's for sure. We are definitely not himbos. <laughs> no, and... I'm himbo pa a himbo passing, so that, but as are you. I'm no, I'm definitely a daddy. And <laughs> sometimes people don't believe my age because I was recently had my birthday and 53 and a lot of people were like, what? And I'm very thankful for, to my mother and for her genes yeah. and not looking exactly my age, or at least a lot of people didn't think I looked my age. Exactly. And so I'm very grateful for that, but i definitely would be in the more daddy side Okay. And I'm oh. fine with it. Yeah. And that's that's hot too. So yeah. <laughs> but but moving right along to season one of For the Love of Dilfs, there was so much drama. I really, really enjoyed it. There was so much drama and cute boys and romance was the most important thing that I think I really enjoyed because I'm a romantic at heart. So I re you really got a You're sense romantical. Of, I know I'm such a sucker for romance. Me but too. That, Good. I think you're really going to like this because you get to see how a genuine connection can really exemplify or really expand and have a relationship grow because these people just meet each other in this house. And then the connection and the vibes and things of that nature that go on from them interacting, it, you actually get to, it's palpable, the connection. You get to see it grow. You believe it. Oh, definitely. But I don't... The thing is that is believable is that they are, when they're in the house, it's completely believable. But when I I'm a skeptic also, so I think that I a part of me was thinking when they come out of the house, where are they going to actually be as far as their relationship is concerned? Or maybe this is something that only can exist in the confines of this house. So did yeah, you follow I, up on season one on whoever was paired up? You know what? There is one specific person that I have, I actually followed him online and I, well, there's a couple of the himbos that I know that are not with their, with their daddies. So okay. yeah. Yeah. I, fo I followed up with about two or three of the himbos and they, they were saying that it just didn't work out. I think a couple of them were in long distance relationships. So it, it it's very interesting how these things tend to work. So let me ask and, you this because I want to watch it and it sounds a lot like a lot of fun. We have a little bit to say about some of the contestants that are going to be on <laughs> season two, but at 53, I recently have connected with somebody that is 38. Okay. And th so that's about what, 14 years or so. My <laughs> math is wrong. Yeah. It's, uh, we're close enough. That's, that's totally fine. Else, yeah. <laughs> 50s, 30s is. Wait, you said 50 uh, and 38? Yeah. I think that's 15 years. Oh, wow. Okay. So, but we are so connected on so many levels and this person is an entrepreneur and I just think that, you know, I honor, I take that on as if I need to be the daddy, I, I don't mind it. I mm -hmm. just think a lot of people my age, I don't really, I've, tried to go on dates with people my age and older recently and i don't know it doesn't work for me i have really? a, a more youthful spirit and yeah it 
there's and it's I'm not going like in the twenties here. It's like late thirties, y'all. So and there's somebody else that I here in New York. I might be guilty of that. That's why I made that face. <laughs> Go yeah, ahead, what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I mean, this they might be onto something. No, I totally get that. Although I know who you're talking about, right? So I think that he would not mind <laughs> being the daddy in this situation. I think he would be totally fine with that. Well, we'll talk more about that. <laughs> later, later, later. Um, the one thing we we'll post this on tagspodcast.com episode 533 the new cast of season two of this series and our one critique in our meeting was that they need to get a better photographer or have the photographer actually tell these like teach them better photography am i not right you are totally right i just feel like a lot of the contestants are much more attractive than what this photography has portrayed of them. When you're a photographer, yeah. you have to look at people and see what their best angles are. I think that is part of uh, being a, a good photographer. You have to be able to look at people and, and discern which way they would look the best and or just even play around with it and know people's uh, angles and which angles look best for what type of people and lighting there's so much that goes into it lighting and hello this was not it i'm so i'm sorry to whoever this photographer <laughs> is i apologize for, for critiquing their work so harshly but it was uh yeah. i think that they can do better that's what i'll say that's what i'll say <laughs> i 100 percent agree with you okay um we have got to move on. We have got so much to talk about. We've barely scratched the surface. And Cody, we got to pick these topics, right? Because there's so many good okay. ones. You want to do the Fire <laughs> Island one or the vegetarian one? <laughs> uh, well, we put the vegetarian one off from last week. So maybe let's do that one. Let's do that. Or a study, yeah. A study finds that vegetarian men are presumed less masculine and maybe even gay. But why? Well, this is a significant many respondents to this study which was done i believe overseas and found that exactly meat eating puns aside it's not a huge surprise that vegetarians is written off as gay considering the lifestyle has become associated with libertarian in fact plant-based participants revealed they often felt perceived as trendy or fashionable for the diet choices rather than making a conscious ethical or health choice and that being said the study also found that women were more open to dating a partner who follows a plant-based diet than men were so is it toxic masculinity or is steak really just that good is the question they're asking um <laughs> It's so funny because over the New Year holiday in Puerto Vallarta, there's a new Netflix show, Cody, that I watched with my sister and our family friend, Kevin. And it's called, uh, what is it called? It is, you, uh, is it You Are What You Eat? I, I thought that's, that's what it was. I was pretty sure that's what You it Are was. What You Eat. And it's a twin study where they look at twins because twins apparently have the same biological structure. So it's mm -hmm. going to be a more relevant, accurate study when they look at these twins. And they had twins of all ethnic backgrounds and they had twins of various ages. And what they were looking at was they had one on an omnivore diet and one on a plant-based diet. And oh. they were looking at different things to see health as well as diet and how much weight you could lose based when you were on these two diets but one of the things that the doc the three or four part series does is show you where your meat and fish is really coming from and i don't know <laughs> oh, i'm not watching I, this now <laughs> i watched it all i already knew a lot of this stuff and it's not cute it's not pretty to see where your meat really comes from but also to know what meat really does and to your system and how it links up to your organs 
And I've always been intrigued with a vegetarian and a vegan diet. And so I've already started. I have a brand new book. That, uh, Wait, are you a vegetarian I, now? No, but I'm, I think what my friends all decided is that we're going to do maybe like a 60-40 thing. Okay. Where 60% of the time we're going to try and be vegan as much as possible. And because we're realistic and we're not going to go hog wild here and it's just... You know, I do like my meat, but I'm going to try and choose meat that's more from sources that I know, or maybe when I'm going on an upcoming cruise, I'm going to eat meat on that at certain times. But I have been eating vegan and vegetarian since I got back and I'm already enjoying it. I bought this book and it's called, oh. yeah, and it's called Plant Powered Performance. <laughs> we need to get him on the, our other show and he's a bodybuilder and um the yes, one he... thing <laughs> yeah the one thing about this whole study is like are vegetarian men less sexy is so w the one thing you learn about in this documentary series is that when you eat meat you actually can get less hard less like people that eat a plant-based diet have stronger erections they have because there's less fat so your blood flow is going further. Women's hormones are much more active. It was significant. So it's actually the opposite of this study or what people actually think. You're less masculine. It's like you're actually more horny when you eat a plant-based diet. And so really? I am on board with it. I am not saying I'm going to do it 100% because I don't want to put that. I'm, But I am already starting it a more plant-based diet in my life and yeah something tells me though when you get into it you're gonna uh so doug says that it's a, a flexitarian diet where you eat meat sometimes i think you're gonna go from being this is just me thinking outside of the box thinking out loud you're gonna go from being a flexitarian to being an actual vegetarian and vegan because you're gonna get engrossed into all of this but i mean that remains to be seen we will see how that pans out i totally agree with you that this is actually ridiculous because there is no way that vegan and veganism and vegetarianism can be related to you being less masculine or gay it's full of toxic masculinity Thank and it's you. so prevalent in the media right now. And this study actually gives me pause because how do how does being kind to animals make you less of a man? It's just disgusting. I will say that I went to a vegan restaurant one time, though, and I hated everything. So I don't know if I'm going to join you at vegan restaurants because it was horrible. And I think me going to that vegan restaurant actually made me straight. That's how much I hated it. <laughs> how long ago was that is my question. <clears throat> A while ago, right? It was, it was about 10 years ago, but okay. still. <laughs> so much. So imagine being in Mexico where, you know, it's so, we thought so meat based and we had ceviche that was mushroom based. It was so good okay. with mushrooms and portobello quesadillas, which were delicious. And you know, I've been eating lentil soups the last couple of days, and I found this mushroom, portobello mushroom steak that was tasted like a steak. And I had a really? side of brown rice and my broccoli. I loving it so far. And I just think today is a better day for plant based. And we need to, a shift has to happen because where our animal sources are coming from and we, we will stop this conversation in a minute here because this is not our type of show but <laughs> where it does relate to sexuality is that you know you can't keep eating meat 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 it will clog your arteries it will affect your erections it just will science is backing this up and that's why we are talking about this watch that show you are what you eat on netflix you will see what i'm talking about and this notion that vegetarians are vegans are less masculine whatever i don't even want to be 
like totally masculinized. I want to have right. moments in time when I'm masculine. I want to have times when I'm feminine. So fuck off everybody. If you think that's that perfect. that's like the key to life and yeah. I want to live longer and I'm so excited. I'm so excited about my new book. Okay, and I want to come over I'm, and read it too. I just want to stare at the guy on the cover, honestly. He's, <laughs> That's it. When you watch this series, the the bodybuilder on there, he's built. His whole notion is you can be built and be on a plant based diet, and so okay. it's just we're we gotta shift. I'm just saying we got to yeah. shift. I don't know what people I are gotta saying. I got to read these but... comments. I was about to say, we can't move on. <laughs> they are amazing. Okay. <laughs> Bryce says uh, he's horny when he eats eggplant too. Okay. That was the first thing. <laughs> David says, I hope I don't get banned for this question, but legit, do vegans swallow? <laughs> Do they swallow cum? Because <laughs> then they wouldn't be vegan anymore. <laughs> mm. What do you think, Steve? <laughs> so it's not, are we, so it would come to the question if you're not eating animal, yeah. but you're, or animal uh, but by we are, but are we animal? You are an animal. Are. <laughs> so I can make an exception for that. <laughs> I don't think you should be vegan. You're not a vegan then. You're not actually a vegan. No, but I you. didn't. Say, I, so that was the whole thing. That's I why know. I started I'm this whole thing. You. And that's why I said 60, 40, because I don't want to go like, we all came from that perspective watching this where it would be really hard to just be like, oh my God, shut the TV off. We're immediately going to be vegan and let's start tomorrow. And it's just like, that's not, not realistic really. either. Yeah. There's also, you can have sustainable farms where you know where the cows and the eggs are coming from. And so it's not to say that everything's wrong and how we've been doing it before. I also don't think it's realistic to just like, shift from an entire lifetime of doing one way and not but knowledge is power and yep. i believe in health and wellness shout out to our brand new show of a certain age and we are going to be talking about this on our new show with a nutritionist coming up soon you should check that out of a certain age wherever you get your podcast or what we like to say awaka oaca and we're talking about these issues. So, yes, we can't keep going the way we are is the point. And I don't think so. Yes. In my 6040 come is totally allowed. <laughs> and I swallowed the other day with somebody in Puerto Vallarta that I Okay. Yeah. And it was Get lovely. It. Yeah. So and it was organic. Swallow that, swallow that it animal byproduct. It was sustainable. <laughs> it was organic come. And it was delicious cum. So love and I want to, I want more of this everybody. person's cum. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say. More to come on that. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. This show is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's see where we're at because I got to choose these. Um, okay. We were going to talk about this recently and it was a recent thread that said, is sex with friends a bad idea? Here's what queer men had to say. So a recent Reddit thread drummed up the question, do you want to fuck your friends? And the person went on to say, when I think of my friends and I think of my partners, one of the things that doesn't overlap is the presence of sex. I'm not trying to judge anyone, but I find it emotionally overcomplicated to be sexually involved with both your potential partner and all of your so-called friends. And after many other gays and their two cents tried to <laughs> get into the mix, many had a lot to say. Quote, the good part is the fun is free. It can also deepen and add an extra layer to your friendships. Somebody else said most of them, yeah, hang out, play some board games, watch TV, make out a bit, suck some, suck some dick, a great evening. Somebody else said I would fuck friends if I had friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Somebody else said, yeah, many of my friendships include sex. Usually I have met these people through sex first and then friendship developed. And that part I definitely can see and agree with. 
I have been hanging out with some younger lot, as the British like to say, recently, and I can see with my new OnlyFans that there can be blurred lines at times, not with my long-standing friendships. I mean, Cody, you and I are sisters, but yeah. you and I have actually gotten more comfortable. We went to the naked beach over yeah. the summertime, and I know you're like hard and fast, like, I don't want to see that. But you, <laughs> I saw you naked, you saw me naked, and it really yeah. wasn't that big of a deal. Um, we went to the sex boat together. Yeah, I lost my laptop or stupidly left it in the T TSA conveyor belt in, in New York City and was all up in arms and walked into you. You were sitting on the toilet and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was distraught. And I didn't even care. You didn't care either. I was distraught. <laughs> I mean, are we going to be like sucking each other's dick? No, but no. I mean, but we're it's, comfortable around each other. I've lightened up about that whole mystique over the years. And this is coming from somebody in his 50s. Have you at all? I mean, I know it's you probably don't want to have sex with your friends either. But I've been in situations with one of our other co-hosts where somebody was doing something over there and I was doing something and it really wasn't that big of a deal. Oh, I've done that before. <laughs> if you don't have sex with your friend in the room, then what are you even really doing? And you're not <laughs> with your life. What are you doing with your life? If you guys can't have sex in front of each other, then who are you? You're not even really friends. Okay. <laughs> but when it comes to actually having sex with my friends, I think that that really blurs the line a little bit. And I'm speaking solely for myself. And it's not something that I could, I feel like I could handle. I get some people can separate sex from romantic feelings, but I am not one of those people. If, if I do have sex with somebody more than one time and we kiki together and we hang out, we go watch, we watch Drag Race on the television, then you are my man and you have nothing else to say about it. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's where I stand on all of this. I can understand if two people meet and they do have sex and then they don't have sex anymore and a friendship develops from their interaction on maybe they met up at a bar or on one of the apps and then they realize they're not compatible and then they move on to become friends after that. I totally can see that. Or I met somebody, I, I mentioned this in a previous episode, I went to speed dating here in New York City. Mm -hmm. And one of the pe persons that I was talking to was they put us into groups like they only wanted us to be in 35 or younger or 36 or older. Of course, I was in the older one. But in the interim, I was talking to a guy that was in the other group. And we hit it off so much. Yeah. So I know you know him, yep. that we are such good friends. And we were able to post that on our because they put a questionnaire on who would you want to meet up with again, we actually didn't want to meet up in that capacity. Romantic. Yeah, uh, or romantical. Uh, but he actually is seeing somebody in London now that is Ooh. older than him. So mm, I want to hear all is, about that. But we are so close. I really love this newer friend of mine and could not have, you know, so age groups are a whole thing. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I I, I get that. They're they're wonderful. I met them a couple times, several times. Yeah. And I have to say that you couldn't have found a better friend. So yeah, yeah, hi. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so absolutely okay well we have a few more topics to get into and this one i've been wanting to talk to for a minute it was a reddit thread and it asked the question are older gays interested in bottoming for younger guys they wrote i am a younger top who prefer having sex with older guys because their bodies are much more developed but from what I have seen, most older guys want to be the top. Any tips? Well, you can imagine there was a lot to say, um, saying, hello, just call it out in your grunder profile. You'll have an available of messages from older bottoms. And somebody said, I'm 50 and a strict bottom. And yes, I enjoy a bottom top. Um, however, I find most of the younger tops in my area are not looking for older bottoms. Mm. Somebody else, they continued with this and 
I just have a, a little dissertation that I'll make a minute here. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> to say as fifty as a 53-year-old who was always in the bottom stratosphere and meant to feel that way for so many years and embraced it recently have really embraced my topness and but i have met a couple different people one in particular cody i've talked to you offline with mm -hmm. that we had conversations about him being one age younger than me and me being my age and how it's so fun to flip and one of us take the dominant role at sometimes and the other one take the dominant role at times and we do it so effortlessly at times and it when one of us is dominant we are in control and when the other one takes over he is in control and it is effortless we have both had amazing climaxes out of it i don't think i have experienced this type of sexuality in my entire life Oh. And it's so satisfying to be, we have so many options of the things that we can do and the roles that we can play. And even though he's younger than me and I'm older than him, we play around with these. I and mean, I don't know that we really think about the age thing as much. Sometimes mm -hmm. we say the poppy thing and it's, I enjoy being the elder of him, but sleeping together with this person has been so romantical and sometimes mm -hmm. he's in my little nook sometimes i'm in his nook and we just flip back and forth and it's so healthy and i just think this is what i want and it is possible so i don't think older gays should worry about it is like younger gays want to top yeah i could not agree with you more i think it's less of an issue of age and people getting to a certain age and not being able to bottom for younger guys. And I think it's more about compatibility. I think that if you are attracted to someone and you get to that stage where you want to have sex and you and you both decide that the older guy wants to bottom and then the younger guy wants to top, I think it's perfectly fine. It seems really hot to me. I've seen younger, uh, younger guys top older guys as porn before. And I think that it's super hot. So Let's see more of that. I do think that there is a pre-discerned uh, societal uh, guideline that the that in the gay community, if you're older, then you are perceived as the top. I know that I'm guilty of thinking that sometimes, and I think that it I should probably just let it go. And well, no, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> I'm rethinking that. So <laughs> some sometimes I'm raising I my I hand. Let that go. I know. I see Are you, you calling me. He, yes, Steve. What do you have to? What do you have? Thank to you say? for calling on me. <laughs> I'm raising my hand. <laughs> Where did so, balloons come from? <laughs> I know, right? So to your point, <laughs> as to give yourself credence on what you're saying. It's so weird because as I've gotten older, I've embraced being a top. And I was reading the story that we didn't include in today's. And one of the things was somebody having a tough time topping and getting hard, but putting a condom on. And I do remember in my earlier years trying to go that route and trying to put that condom on and it my dick going flaccid immediately and thank goodness for things like prep that we have now that i don't have those issues anymore and a host that's a whole sexuality conversation but mm -hmm. my point being is it mentally took a lot for me to accept a direction that i could actually top and to learn to top and to learn how i top it's a whole shift if you've always been in one position, but to know that I probably could and I wanted to with certain people, but yeah. to shift and to learn and to get over all those things that make your dick go hard and not hard. And what does that mean? And do I have to always be this position? Messed with my mind for several years. And I'm talking about somebody here myself in my early 50s that is figuring this out now where 
sex now is very enjoyable and I'm finally figuring all this out. It's not to say that I didn't have enjoyable sex in the past, yeah. but now I have a little bit more variety. And this isn't an antidote for everybody. It's just for me personally, because of my trajectory of being always a bottom, I now have more options. Mm -hmm. And as a daddy or a poppy or whatever, now I can play yeah. that role. I can also be a bottom and I could flip it and, you know, Missy Elliott it and do all these things. And it's, <laughs> it's sex is super fun now because, and meeting people that are willing to go there is being really satisfying. And I, that's all I really wanted to say in my dissertation. Totally. I <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Clap, 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 clap. Uh <laughs> my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> I loved every second of it. And I agree with you because I think that you are never too old or too young to explore your sexuality. You're learning stuff about yourself constantly, every single day. So this is that is something that you should be exploring until you can't explore it anymore. Either, I don't know, there's a myriad of things that could happen to you that you that you can't explore your sexuality. But until then, until that date, get out there, do the damn thing. I know for me personally that I've done enough exploring. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> as far as bottoming is concerned, I have. I've done a okay, lot. Okay, Dora. But <laughs> oh my gosh, I just imagine I... myself with a little bob wig. Oh man, I'm getting one for next. Wait, week, did okay. we come up with our Halloween costumes? Because maybe oh, I need my... to be Dora. Oh my gosh, and I could the be sexual the sexual explorer, Dora, the sexual explorer. Cool, let's do it. Oh my god. Snap. Snip, snap. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh I think that I the like I said before, the connection, if I find the right person, then I'd be willing to bottom for them. And I already know I got a couple, I got one name on the list already. <laughs> okay now. Okay now. <laughs> Bryce said he'll be swiper. <laughs> the little raccoon that's have you ever watched Dora the Explorer before? No, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know the answer to that before you before I asked the question? But I have watched Bluey. I don't know why. I love this cartoon <laughs> called Bluey. <laughs> it's so left field, and I love Bluey. He's British, and I love him. But <laughs> I've never seen Bluey, but that sounds fabulous. <laughs> You'll love Bluey. <laughs> Love Bluey. <laughs> Where is the show going? <laughs> Where is the show going? I know. Where, Where are we going right from? now? Let's just one are we going to do the second Reddit? Or oh, no? Go ahead. Are you guys happy with your dick? <laughs> oh, one? let's do that one. I love it. I love it. Yes. So this was an interesting one because somebody posted the question on Reddit: uh, Are you guys happy with what your dick looks like? If not, what would it change? And they prefaced it by saying, like, for example, would you want to be bigger, girthier, circumcised, or would you want your foreskin back? It was that latter part that caused a whole sensation of many comments to come through about the circumcision. And, of course, we've all probably asked that question before, but the circumcision one had a lot of people commenting on and I decided to do a little bit of a deeper dive to the Cleveland Clinic for foreskin restoration and foreskin restoration you ask what is it well it's a process <laughs> that reverses a circumcision you won't get your old foreskin back just get that out of your head but you can stretch penile skin over time to create a new foreskin or surgically attached skin from another area of your body to your penis of course Risk depend on the approach, but may include dissatisfaction with how your new foreskin looks. And after reading this, I so let me just say on I'm just going to reference Jet of Jet's Naked Beach Tours that I just went on, who I'm a big fan of, and we've connected recently. And it was my birthday last Friday, and there was another birthday boy who had a January 12th birthday. Oh, and God. on the way back, it's a party, and we're having a great time on this boat, headed back to Puerto Vallarta from the private beach tour. And Jet, who has a lot of foreskin, decided to stretch his foreskin out and put tequila in it. 
and give it to us birthday boys. And it was amazing because he can really stretch his foreskin out. And I, you could, it was like a full shot, Cody, that he could fill in his foreskin. It's amazing. I do that. <laughs> <laughs> and the boy did it, the other tw January, tw he was 38, okay, the other guy, and, and I did it, and it was amazing. But what did I want, was I jealous of that and want that? No, because I don't want, I just think you you have what you have, don't go through surgical procedures. It's like there's risks involved, according to the Cleveland Institute of <laughs> Restoration on Foreskin and don't mess with it. Find new ways. There's all kinds of Tantra workshops you can do to really increase sensation no matter where you're at with foreskin or non-foreskin. And no, don't, I, I say no. How do you weigh in? Uh, so first of all, I'm very happy with my penis and other people are as well. So I think I'm going to keep I most of the thing, say, <laughs> you know, I knew I we had to have a little bit of a caveat, <laughs> you know, that I had to stick it in there because, you know, pun intended, but I'm, um, so, uh, the only thing that I would change if I can magically make my foreskin reappear, I definitely would. But this whole foreskin restoration thing, it seems really restoration dangerous. Restoration hardware. <laughs> <laughs> you restore houses you don't restore. they oh my god things are so expensive there yeah i can't believe it but yeah so i would say <laughs> you go to that say, rooftop where they have like the oh the my fancy god. smancy we can't afford all that right now no uh -huh. ma'am no thank you no uh, <laughs> uh you restore houses you don't restore foreskin thank you very thank much you. because the the sensation is not even going to really be the same. So why would you even do it for it's the aesthetic? Not. Yeah, it's it's just it's not for me. So but I honey, think seeing Jet like pull up his foreskin and I want to do a shot out a shot of a foreskin. Glass. It was a you can. It was a shot glass. Not Jet. And he no. like and, and then <laughs> I, I love Jet. Just, <laughs> I was responsible for pouring the tequila into this this foreskin shot glass. And it was amazing to see how much held in this foreskin shot glass. Did you hear what I said? I, I heard it. I was listening. <laughs> I feel like I, it made me a little excited. on the Real okay. Housewives of... <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Okay. <laughs> Doug says, I'm Jewish, so I didn't have much of a choice. So, no, I don't miss it or want it back. I get it, Doug. Amazing. Amazing. Wow. We've really gone there in a different way on this I know. show. It's, it's, very, it's very interesting. I, I love every second of it. Yes. And lastly, where would I put that photo? Oh, I could do it. So, you know, we used, we in the past, we've done this segment on, what is it called? Thirst Trap. Thirst Trap. Yep. Where porn stars, only fan sensations have you know, voted on. He hasn't come back with his 2024 version of it yet, but mm -hmm. I thought over the course of my birthday, I would add my interpretation of it. And I know I don't stand anywhere near any of the people that have been in this category come in the past. On, I come don't, on. But uh, Jet, who I've been talking... Okay. <laughs> How do we show? I'm going to put up a, a, a picture that I think could be my image to for run, for a runner up. And How I hot think, is this picture? I would vote for this picture. So, listening audience, when you're listening to this, I'll post this on tagpodcast.com. I have a heart over where my dick would go because it was protruding outward, but it's Jet of Jet's Naked Beach Tours in Puerto Vallarta and myself. And we are on the VIP boat because i want to mention that you can do that you can just do the regular tour you get a little bit more perks when you do this one including the the foreskin shots and we were taking some pictures and i couldn't help but the lighting looks so good and jet's legs are around me i have a heart around where my dick was because i was really horny at the time well, thank you for so, that I, I, I my, my eyes appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, bitch. Um, but <laughs> anyway, I thought that's my vote for 2024 current standing. Maybe it'll make it into Thirst Trap. Um, 
or not. But anyways, that's my vote and my yeah. vote too. Thank it's you a very so it's a very hot picture. Aww. Yeah, you look you guys look great. Thank you. Yes, it was a lot of fun and this has been a lot of fun as oh, always. Yeah. You know, we have a brand new podcast that's in its early stages, and we really want you to give it a listen. It's called Of a Certain Age hyphen Oaka, O-A-C-A, and it's wherever you get your podcast. And we are talking about life lessons in the LGBTQ community. We are talking about things like nutrition, stretching. We're talking about things, wellness, uh, travel, retreats. Supplements. What else, Cody? Are we talking about fashion? Um, yep. We're talking. We talk about yoga. We talk about. Uh, <laughs> oh, she put me on the spot. Your, I can't think now. It's okay. We have it's a all lot. just to be your better self, and we go yes. a little bit deeper on that with really special guests that we have recruited to be a part of that show, and we really want you to give it a listen because we're really proud of it. We started it in the late last year, and then we are continuing. It's called Of A Certain Age. You can follow it on Instagram, Of A Certain Age Pod, P-O-D, on Instagram. And we are up to episode 11. And this week's is with the author, Matthias, Matthias who wrote a book called New Aging. And the book is so good. You need to check it out. Um, check it out, Of A Certain Age Pod. And wherever you get your podcasts of a certain age. Love it. Yes, it really is such a great podcast. Such a labor of love. It's it, it's so enlightening. And it just fills my, my heart with warmth to be out there doing the good fight, making sure people live out loud and age the best in the best way possible. So, yeah, I really love it. And you can hear Cody sing the theme song on oh. every episode, and he will be releasing new music this year. So it's another chance to support Cody and what he's doing. He's such a brilliant, beautiful singer and has such Thank a you, soul. Babe. And you get that in the theme song of a certain age. So shout out to you, Cody. Thank you, and babe. yeah. And in the meantime, we thank everybody for following us tonight. Uh, this show gets repackaged. You can follow my co-host, uh, Cody. He is a life coach at KMD Coaching. KMD Coaching on Instagram. Or follow his personal account at Mr. Maurice. Mr. Maurice. Follow me. I am underscore Steve V on Instagram. Or Twitter, where I am showing some fun new content at Tags Podcast. At Tags Podcast, where you can see what my OnlyFans will potentially look like you can also follow my only mm. fans at sexy poppy steve v sexy poppy steve v new content every week including this week with jet of jets naked beach tours and oh. in the meantime yeah, right and in the meantime continue having hot hot gay, gay sex lovely thank you everyone